So, hey guys, we're here in Germany and we're meeting up with some American friends who came all the way across the pond to see this American company, Gates. And some of these people we might already have been familiar with. Jonathan was with Bosch, now with Gates, very exciting. And Zach's been just kind of in the industry doing all sorts of crazy stuff, just like a mad scientist in the e-bike industry, I guess you could call it. Is, is that like your formal title? Would sure. you be comfortable with that? Sure. That's fine. You can all right. call me whatever you want. All right, cool. Well, <laughs> not late for dinner, that's all, right? As long as we're good for that. And so why don't you just explain, I guess, like what your title is at Gates, what you guys kind of do there, maybe to start off. And then we'll sure. talk a little bit about like the mystery behind the Gates belt, because a lot of people see it and it's just like, oh, that's that cool rubber belt, but it's actually not rubber and yes. it's a lot stronger than rubber. So we'll, we'll get into that though. So, so Jonathan Weiner, responsible for marketing at Gates Carbon Drive. And I'm Zach Krappel. I'm uh, in charge of e-mobility, mostly uh, centered around mid-drive systems. And uh, yeah, Frank, who's not here, does the uh, analog bikes. It's great. Well, excited to be here with you guys, known you guys for a while, and excited to kind of uncover some of the mysteries of, of Gates. I mean. American company, right? Yep. Born, Made, born and raised in, in Denver. Yeah. Born in 1911, actually. A wow. lot of people don't realize that Gates yeah. is over 100 years old. And people might be most familiar with Gates from what, like automotive applications? Yes, and, yes. But, so, yeah, yeah. So in 1918, Gates invented the V belt, which is used in cars all over the world now. Yeah. yeah so that was really the first big claim to fame and uh, I think in the 80s was it that they started coming out with this poly chain belt that was applied to motorcycles I believe in the Correct. 80s yeah and Harley that, uses uh, Gates belt right it was probably yep. one of the more notable much, ones up much wider than this particular belt yeah but similar theory okay cool similar technology so and and we were really the first company to use carbon fiber, which you're holding in your hand. Yeah, you showed in, me uh, this. I mean, it looks like hair, actually. <laughs> right, right, right. And again, mm -hmm. we really want to uncover like what's inside this thing because yes. it's very different than just a rubber belt, as most people might assume it to be. Right, right. But this is actually carbon. Looks like hair, but but it's actually woven into so. really fine strands. And right, but, these, it's, but exactly. it's very strong. Exactly. These straw, these strands are woven together into cords. And you can see the cords in this belt. If you hold it up to the light. Oh, so this one's kind of special here. And one, it's like see-through. This one has no color to it. So you can see the strands. There's five sets of strands in there. And they're all longitudinal in the direction of the uh, forks on the belt. So as the belt is tightened this way, that's where all the strength is. And so there's actually no break in those strands. So I'm like, how does that even work? Because I know that's one of the things, like, you know, there's no breaking in. I know that they have this outer coating. And I know they can't, like, bend it or not too much, at least. Right. What's, right. what's the deal with that stuff? Well, the way it's wound is, uh, so it's one continuous strand in a very large tool. Okay. So, this belt is actually cut from a from a belt that's about a meter tall. Yeah. So each one is is uh, cut from a large tool. Right, right. So it's like a tube, and it's just, it you just you guys just kind of cut exactly it that way, right. and um, and so that's how it's able to be this continuous thing, and that's part of where it gets its strength, I guess, exactly. as well. Exactly. It's not yep. a seam that's going to potentially break or something that's like right. that. Right. That's right. And the wonderful thing about belts versus chains is that they don't stretch. This right. doesn't stretch. You don't have to lube it. Super quiet, super strong. Yeah. Um, okay, so before we get into all the benefits of it, I'd like to try to understand just a little bit more about like what this thing's made of. And so mm. we got the carbon inside, mm. and then outside of it, you know, some people would say like, okay, it looks like rubber, but again, it's not rubber, right? Right, so it's a polyurethane, which is much stronger than rubber. And it also has a nylon wear resistant fabric on this side. Yeah. So the, the, the compound that holds everything together is this polyurethane and then the, the fabric and the cords inside. So there's polyurethane on the top here. Yep. And then polyurethane on the bottom. And then there's oh. this, 
this fabric in between where this would contact the cog, actually, yeah, the right? fabric you, is You what have a cog and exactly you have the... Exactly, right. I'll grab the one of these here Thank if you want to show. Thank you. So that. these sprockets has the center track design, so the sprocket fits in perfectly with the belt. These are designed together. Designed together ensures that they'll, they fit perfectly and they last a very long time. And so the yeah. center track, the center track is basically, it's an alignment aid. Right. It allows, it, it basically drives the sprocket into the belt and makes sure that the belt is always centered yes. on the sprocket. And make sure it doesn't slide or fall off that's also, exactly right? Like right. that's pretty critical because these things could be put under a lot of force as well. Right. Right. Um, and they can handle it. Right. without stretching or you know exactly like, which is which is great yes. um now you mentioned i think the the center track also helps to dissipate any sort of like dirt or debris or anything as well right is right that, right is that correct yeah and so yeah this design you can see there are ports where as the belt passes over the sprocket it can just push any dirt or debris right through the sprocket so yeah. it's a, a patented technology and uh, yeah, Gates is the, is the only user of this center track technology. So you guys have a demonstration of how this looks with the yes, dirt and everything yes. coming out of it. But before we get over to that, I want to just show this bike, which is <laughs> like really crazy. Mm -hmm. And Zach, you were involved in kind of designing and making this. Can you just tell just really quick before we kind of get into mm -hmm. that? I, this is like one of the craziest looking bikes I've ever seen before. Yeah, so this, this bike um, started, it, it was a concept in our, in our minds uh, starting in last November, and we have a bunch of experience with cargo bikes, um, like uh, Risa Muller Paxter, for example, yeah. or Urban Arrow. Um, those are bikes that have a large front cargo area, um, and, and we started thinking, you know, what we like in cargo bikes is to have a lot of visibility to the cargo in front of it. Those particular bikes are not um, they're not the best for a more sporty, potentially off-road cargo experience. We sort of yeah. think, you know, it'd be kind of cool to make a bike like this. We call it the Sport Cargo or S-Cargo, and we sort of think, oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. We'll call this, we, we evolved to make it called the S-Cargo, and then we said, oh, let's call this the Schnelle Schnecke, which Schnecke in German is the snail. Uh, ah. Escargo, escargo. So clever. So, anyways, Man. We, so many levels. Of we, fun. Uh, this this particular bike is uh, it's made out of titanium. We have some 3D printed bits in here. The dropouts are uh, are 3D printed. The Bosch Gen 4 motor note is 3D printed. They're way less expensive to 3D print than to machine CNC. Yeah. Machine. Wow. Titanium is super expensive. So we wanted to highlight in this design a lot of uh, technology to be able to 3D print stuff and, and basically allow small niche handmade builders start to see this kind of a vision as a, as a way to um, put Bosch technology on their bikes. So And gates as well, right? Exactly. Yeah, I mean... And that's that's a great application, and and we should note specifically. So this has the roll-off E14 hub on it, mm -hmm. which is an internal hub, which is generally what you'll find uh, a belt drive on. Yeah. So it is going to be specific to a, a single chain line, right? Um, right. And uh, but but this is this is definitely a, a great example of that application. And so you guys have this um, this display going here, mm. and. I think if a chain was running through this for an extended period, it'd be pretty rusty and, and maybe it'd start really locking up on you. But right, exactly. This seems to be functioning pretty well. But, and I guess this is probably an interesting demonstration of that center track kind of pushing the, uh, the dirt and grime kind of through the, the sprocket specifically, right? Like exactly. That's, it pushes that's it right of, through so it doesn't gunk up. And when you're done riding, let me show you what is required to care for the belt. If you even have to. If you even have to. If you go for a muddy ride, slushy yeah. ride, right. re recommend just a little bit of water right. and uh, hose it off. 
That's it. You could potentially use a brush if it's super muddy, Dumped gunky, up or whatever, right? But but really, that's all you need. No need, no need for chemicals to take care. Yeah. In contrast, probably many people are familiar with the old rusty chain and all that's required to take care of chains, of course, uh, the WD-40 and uh, water and, and cloth and everything like that. So just really low maintenance. That's the, one of the key benefits of the Gates Carbon Drive. Yeah. So speaking of maintenance, I mean, this is an interesting thing that comes up a lot and it's really like, how long does the belt actually last? Because I know a chain over time, they can really, they can end up stretching out or at least wear down where it starts to not function so well and the drivetrain parts can wear out rather quickly. How, yeah, how long does the belt actually last? Like, again, we're here to like uncover these right, weird right. mythical things about the belt and right. trying so to understand that. So we've done extensive lab testing, chain versus belt for lifetime. Yeah. What we typically find uh, in lab and in real conditions, yeah. we typically say two to three times longer than a chain right. in similar environmental conditions. Yeah. So with this CDX belt, which is our top of the line, two to three times longer than a chain. Okay. And but we've seen like some pretty extreme cases. Like I know that people have talked about, you know, going 20, 30,000 miles, like crazy stuff like that on a belt. I mean, so that seems to be a lot further than two to three times. So I'm just trying to like wrap my head around what's really the that's, situation. That's do, you, do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, on that on that super technical um, guy? So there, there's a few different use cases, especially with e-bikes. Um, in Holland, you know, there are a lot of uh, flat, long uh, speed pedelec examples sure. where if the if the e-bike was in uh, say, um, 18 for a Bosch Gen 2 and right. 18 in the front and a, and a cassette in the back and 1136 or 1140 something like that in those speed pedal conditions that 1811 it might last about four to five hundred miles yeah and yeah they wear out really really quickly that's an example of just the whole time. right mm, and right. we did a replacement on a, on a bike as a test case in in uh, the Netherlands yeah uh, that basically there was a user that complained about that specific thing. He was having to replace an entire drivetrain every three weeks when he replaced yeah. his car with an e-bike. So we did a we did a belt swap with a roll-off, and in that use case, he was able to, well, he didn't go through the system, but he, he had gotten to 7,000 kilometers uh, in comparison to the right, so about four to 500 five. kilometers. So, right, 5,000, so that's like 10x basically in that scenario, that's which a, I guess that's a different use scenario, technically mm. speaking, but, yeah. but that's basically the- That's a specific the, optimal case for us. Right. It's a good story. Right, <laughs> and, the, and the weather can be, you know, maybe less than optimal, sometimes wet and different th dirty right. and that sort of thing in the city. Right. But, um, right. but yeah, I know that we have a lot of bikes out there with the belt on it and, and it's, it's pretty rare that they're actually needing a replacement. We're seeing they're holding up really well. And I mean, what would somebody generally find over time? Like what's the best way to see like your belt is actually getting to the point where it might need replacing? Uh, you would typically have some wear pattern on the sprocket itself and potentially some uh, indication of wear on the belt. You might start to see a little bit of abrasion on the teeth. Right, and once it kind of gets right. into the polymer area then you start to say like or yeah, something exactly. like that. that that would be one example yeah, yeah. um and i and i believe um you'll start to see, see this nice round shape of the teeth if these teeth start looking like shark fins yeah that's time that, that i think that's an that's indicator exactly right, yeah. and generally speaking are we replacing the cogs at the same time as the belt or just yes. the right right yeah. okay great um yeah that's really great information and i think that that kind of helps to give a better idea of, of how these things work. This one is actually a good indication of wear. Okay. And what you can what you see here on one side, you can see wear compared to the other side. Right. Because uh, it's going in kind of one direction, it's right? Going in so one we're direction. we're pulling on that. And you can see see how the the tooth profile at the top is quite narrow on this one. Right. It is worn down, worn down, worn down. Right. And, and eventually we'll start like actually cutting through this a little bit. That's right. Right. That totally makes sense. Um, yeah, great. Um, 
again, speaking on the maintenance thing, I know we don't want to get too much into it, but one of the things, maybe people are not as familiar with the belt. I know that there's a lot of these details as far as like the belt tension, chain line, stuff like that. And, and maybe just to mention it briefly, that, you know, some things that are really important on the belt that might not be as critical on a chain per se, like one of the things is the, the, ch the belt line, right? It needs to be very precise because you can actually have trouble, especially because of the center track, right? If it's- That's right. In, so that's a matter of actually lining up the dropouts on the rear of the bike so they're perfectly aligned practice so there's not exactly. not some sort of and if somebody makes like a if they don't make the frame right or something like that it could be in the cheaper yeah. bike it could, could not you, be so good right and you would know uh, by there, the first indication is there's some noise right and if it's off if the front sprocket is off in the rear by two millimeters or more you would start to hear some indication yeah say something's not quite right back there or you could potentially feel some vibration in your in your pedal strap Great. Um, yeah, and then uh, and then the tension. You guys actually have an app that you use for the tension. Is that right? Exactly. Do. Free app that you can download, and you pluck the belt like a guitar string. Yeah. The phone picks up the frequency and tells you what the tension is based on that frequency. Right. And is there is there some sort of data as far as uh, what the tension should actually be? Is there what's how, what's a good way that somebody could tell? Is it something the, specific to the manufacturer so or on the app? There's three different cat uh, three categories. There's uh, like a single speed touring. Um, there's also I think it's four uh, mountain bike uh, in tandem. Yeah. So depending on the application, there's a different uh, set of tensions. So right. it's not necessarily unique to an e-bike. If it's those sort of applications, would you say? Because right. I know for us specifically, we're primarily focused on e-bikes. Yeah. Would you say that you just kind of use those universally still, even though it might be an e-bike specific? Yeah, you would you would go per application. Okay. Uh, and and uh, if you follow those guidelines, you're good. Right. Awesome. So thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate, you know, yeah. uncovering the mysteries of gates, if you will. Um, I learned a lot. I hope you guys learned something here. And uh, so like you have the app that basically somebody can download on iPhone and Android so they can get mm -hmm. some details about that. Yeah. And then also the website, which is a lot of resources on gatescarbondrive.com. Gatescarbondrive.com. And yeah, really look forward to more companies kind of switching to belt. I think it just makes sense, especially for e-mobility, right? I mean, exactly. that's our focus. And yeah, I mean, the, the people that switch definitely don't regret it, I always yeah, say. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's all about unchaining your adventure. Unchaining your no adventure. No matter what kind of adventure you're on. Commuting to work can be an adventure. Heading up a huge mountain. I yeah. like it. Well, thanks again, guys. Look forward to seeing you back in the States. And, Thank you, Chris. Uh, all right. Yes. Appreciate the time. All right. All right. Take care, guys.